So I just wanted to make a short video to show you an alternative way of finding the highest common factor and lowest common multiple. This method for me is quicker than using prime factorization and Venn diagrams. But when I teach it to students, usually because they've already seen the Venn diagram method and most of them are all right with it, they don't like it. Um, and once they've done about five, to be honest, I think they'd get it. So I'm going to do it first of all with 42 and 90. Uh, so I'm going to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. And all I do is I go across like that and I go down like that. And all I'm looking for is a common factor of 42 and 90. It can be any factor of 42 and 90 and it doesn't have to be prime. So I know that uh, 2 goes into both of them. And you're splitting it kind of in the same way you would with product of primes. Uh, so my next, next to the 2, under the 42, uh, it's 2 times what makes 42, it's 21. And it's 2 times what makes 90, it's 45. So I'm kind of splitting it like you would in a tree, uh, I'm just not drawing a tree. So then I'm going to do exactly the same thing for 21 and 45. So I know that they have a common factor of 3. So I'm going to say 3 times 7 is 21 and 3 times 9 is 45. Now I'm going to stop there because 7 and 9, the only common factor is 1 and we stop when we get there. So I'm going to stop at that point. Now your lowest common multiple, sorry, yeah I'll do that first. Your lowest common multiple is nicely an L shape. Your lowest common multiple is 2 times 3 times 7 times 9, whatever that is. Your highest common factor are just these factors that you pulled out at the side. Six. And that's it. That's the method. For me, it's hugely, I mean, it, that was so much quicker than drawing two prime factor trees and then drawing a Venn and putting them in. Um, but it is just an alternative method. I think there's more methods as well. It's one I only saw a couple of years ago, uh, but I think it's worth showing students that there's more than one way. I'll do a couple more just in case you want a bit more practice. So next I'm going to go for 60 and 72. I know 6 is a factor of them. 6 times 10 is 60. 6 times 12 is 72. 2 is a factor of them. 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times 6, I'm going to stop because I've got to the end. My highest common factor is 12 because I times them together. And my lowest common multiple is this L shape. Three hundred and sixty. Next I'm going to do this one. This one is just harder because the numbers are harder basically. So it's 5 times 36, and if they can't do it, you know, absolutely they need to be working it out using, I can't talk and do this at the same time, they need to be working out using bus stop, and 5 into 225 is 45. <coughs> uh, then I can see a factor of 9, and it's really important that they have an understanding of factors. Some of them, maybe that's why students find this harder, because sometimes um, their knowledge isn't quite as good. Now, mine have all finished after two rows, <clears throat> but often students will use smaller numbers like two. So the, the, you can keep going as long as you need to. Uh, the, the thing you're looking for is for these bottom two numbers to have no common factor other than one. That's when you stop. So when you're creating your examples, um, you maybe need to compare people's answers, uh, show that you can choose different factors. So I could have divided by three, then divided by three again. Um, you're just looking for where there's no more common factors. So now we've got the highest common factor is 45 and my lowest common multiple is 5 times 9 times 4 times 5 equals 900. Now obviously there is the risk of confusing students. My experience is that students don't tend to use this one. Uh, they like the Venn diagram and my experience with exams is that um, they tend to ask for things that come from the prime factorisation and the Venn diagram anyway. But it's worth knowing other methods when you're discussing stuff. Hope that helps. We found this in Joe Morgan's 
compendium of mathematical methods and it's quite interesting because there's lots of different methods for different things that even as experienced math teachers in my math department none of us had ever seen before so it is quite interesting thank you